The first kind is the one who says, you know, Allah actually is giving me guidance in this book. And if I come across some, guide, some knowledge of this book that is guiding my life in a different direction, I'm going to change myself. I'm going to try to change my life according to the dictates of this guidance. Because you start reciting this Qur'an and learning it and memorizing it and studying it and you start realizing that this Qur'an is offering a lifestyle that's going this way and your lifestyle is going that way. So you've got to start changing some stuff. So the way you speak starts changing. The way you dress starts changing. The way you eat starts changing. The way the kinds of friends you have starts changing. The kind of job you have starts going through change. The kind of money you make starts changing. The interaction you have with your family starts changing. And when this change starts happening, the first people to notice are who? Your family. And your mother. Your sister. Your brother. Your cousin. They come to you and they say, you're changing, man. You okay? I mean, we're all Muslim. You don't have to be that Muslim. <laughs> Take the thing off your face. They'll come to the, the daughter. The father will come to the daughter. Why are you wearing that on your head? You're not going to go out like that, right? This is America. Don't do that. Who's going to marry you looking like that? They're going to take you away looking at your beard. They will say things like that. Your family. They're not going to say these things to you because they hate you, by the way. You know why they're saying those things? Because they love you. And they're scared for you. They think you're becoming crazy. And that's nothing new. Whenever people started turning to their faith, what do their families consider? Insanity as the only possibility. <laughs> and so what happens, especially the young people here, listen up. When you start turning a little bit religious, a little too religious than the rest of your family, or the parents start turning more religious than their kids, when that happens, then those that are not moving at your pace are waiting, patiently waiting, until you get a C on your test. Until one time you snap at your father. And then you'll turn around and say, is this what your Islam teaches you? It is that it's this, all this masjid stuff, that's why you got to see. That's why you failed. You know, so they're waiting for your mistake. To blame what? The religion. And when this is going on, this psychological war that's going on in your home, you walk into your home and it's a war zone. It's a war zone. Your mother, your wife, your, hus you know, your husband, your brother, your sister, your cousin, your uncle, whoever they are, they are saying the most hurtful, sarcastic, poisonous things that if anybody else said, you would run them over with your car, but then you have to take it from them because they're your family, and eventually, young man, 18, 19, 20, you know, you're known to be hot-blooded anyway, so what do you do? You snap. You people are trying to make me follow the forefathers and the culture and... I'm trying to follow the sunnah and you don't even have the right aqidah. Slam the door and walk out. It happens. Certainly does. No, it didn't. <laughs> but I've seen it happen. And even if it did, I wouldn't tell you. So <laughs> but this happens. My family just doesn't understand. And now you start attending halaqat and classes and courses. Not because you want to attend classes and halaqat and courses, because you can't handle what's going on at home, and you just want to be away. Seriously, check yourself. Check yourself. You see, that is the biggest failure of our youth. You have to grow thicker skin. You have to grow thicker skin. You've got to be able to take it. Whatever they dish out, whatever they say, I wish you were never born. Is this why we brought you to America? Right? Whatever they say, it's okay. Smile. Be the best to your parents. Be the best to your parents. Whatever they're doing, they can't be worse off than the father of Ibrahim salam, who's manufacturing shirk products for mass distribution. And he's kicking his son, who's right, out of the house. A lot of times youth tell me, oh man, my parents just don't get it, man. They don't understand. So what if they don't get it? That's not the point. The point is, if you're holding on to this guidance, then you've got to have thick skin. There are people that came before us that were buried alive because they believed. You can't take a, some, some yelling from your parents. You can't take some sarcastic comments from your uncles every eve. Oh, we know what you were like last year. Right? They'll say that. Take it. 
People before us took a lot worse. Thank Allah we got it easy. People are always ungrateful. And we are ungrateful because we don't have sabr. Sabr and shukr go together. When you're not patient, you start complaining. And if the fact that you're complaining is a sign that you're not grateful. Allah is giving you these opportunities to grow your personality, to become forbearing. And you know, I give you advice. When you take guidance seriously, especially young man and young woman, and you're having trouble at home, do more at home. Skip the class. Vacuum the house. Get your mom some flowers. Massage her feet. You know, prepare the taxes for your father. Do something. So instead of associating rebellion with Islam, what do your parents associate with Islam? Service. Better character, better behavior. Don't, don't, don't do it the other way around. 